Do I get do I get thank you? Yes, you have a lovely um uh, fifteen minutes. Houses uh chair, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately I think it's uh, not necessary for me to introduce myself. But, uh, with, uh, we might have tracked a few times uh, together, but uh, perhaps those in the audience don't have me. I've been very involved in bringing forward the plans for the Red Cross River area. And I speak this evening on behalf of the Red Cross Development Partners supporting their application for Section 73 consent to vary some conditions attached to the plan of permission that you granted in October 2010. The Section 73 application makes some improvements to the consented scheme, both in terms of some of its physical characteristics, particularly the proposed new pedestrian and cycle bridge across the 46 the uh, new proposed pedestrian cross, but more importantly, the changes that are directed at ensuring that the scheme has the best chance of delivery. And that is what we need. If you approve this application this evening, there is every chance that work on the key enabling infrastructure that is going to benefit the whole area, including Brent, can get going as early as 2016. Now, I have been granted 15 minutes to speak to you, and I'm going to try not to take up all that time. Good. But I think I need to make a few key points in order to respond to a couple of things that the previous speakers have said. As many of you know, I've been working on the three generation scheme for the past 15 years, and this is a highly complex project. The regeneration area is defined in Barnard's own planning policy, and the objectives are nothing short of transforming as part of the borough. The site area covers 350 acres and has a perimeter in excess of three miles. And most of the site is not clear land. And there are major roads and there are railways that have to be taken into account and the whole thing has to be straight. We have to deal with the reality of delivery of a very ambitious regeneration program which is why so much effort has gone into these plans over many years to get to the point that we're at today. I'm obviously aware that there are some people who find this project less than compelling, and I will respond to some of the issues raised shortly. However, I think it's important that I set out to my personal experience talking to local people over many, many years. A few of them are in the room but most of them are not. I've attended a lot of consultation events, certainly every public one, every day, that we've had, it's been a lot. I've been to see many, many local groups, and I've spoken to literally thousands of people all around the area. And people are telling me the following. They want Red Cross because they're proud of it to be better and to be better soon. This shopping centre was once the jewel in Barnet's crown and the finest such centre in Britain. And I think that Barnet and the customers and the people who live around here deserve for it to be so again. The new pedestrian and cycle bridge over the North Circular and so really dismissed by many people this evening is a part of this application and it will transform connections locally opening up the critical lands for development and will connect more for the south of this western part of the borough directly for the first time. People want the roads and key junctions around this area to work better. The major congestion experienced locally is a result of the simple fact that many of the key roads and junctions were simply not designed for the levels of traffic that exist now we will fix that up front with benefits now and for the longer term. 
we will also be investing significantly together with partners in all forms of non car transport, including buses, improving access to the underground, new facilities for cyclists and pedestrians, and of course the new mainline train station. And that is very much in the course of detailed discussion with Network Rail. People want the creation of a proper community park at the Glitter House playing fields and investment in other green spaces, and they want that early. And this scheme delivers more green space than the area has now, and of far, far better quality. The House playing fields will be a beacon park for bars, and in the first phase, almost 10 million pounds is allocated for this and upgrading Claremont Park, which is the East West Park, uh, immediately. And finally, please let's not forget that people really need and welcome the new jobs and the new homes which will be delivered as part of the scheme. This area, and I include parts of Brent, still has pockets of deprivation and it need not be that way. Communities all around this development will benefit hugely from the slope of investment. Within the first five years alone, we will create 5,000 new jobs in Barnet, plus 1,800 jobs in construction, and all of this will be augmented by training and education programs, just as it happens already at Green Cross Shopping Centre. <coughs> this will take place, and the jobs are going to be locally focused and they're going to be properly enabled. We know about the critical need for new homes in London, and there's every chance that these will now be delivered. And of course, it goes without saying, they will, without exception, meet the GLA space standards. <coughs> Councils, there are real and tangible benefits that will come forward quickly if you approve this. And the biggest single message that I hear is please get on with it. Well, now, <laughs> now I'll make a couple of points about the people who've spoken well, topics of which people have uh, spoken in the grace. I know many of them. We have a pretty good relationship, and I've spent quite a lot of time trying to understand and address their concerns. So let me try and deal with some of these issues publicly. First of all, the figure of 29,000 cars is utter nonsense. It's not true. It was in the Barnet Supplementary Planning Guidance in 2004. Since then, we have had the benefit of proper transport assessment, which has been validated by our transport experts, your officers, independent auditors, Transport for London, and the Highways Agency. The figure of 29,000 cars over a 12-hour day is not true. The true figure is less than 10,000 for a 12 hour a day. And it doesn't mean we like the pollution that this brings, but the works that we will do to the highways will make the roads much more free running, and that will reduce pollution. But just now, farm buildings. Um, I've been very pleased to meet the Dirtenhouse Farm Project Group and I've been involved in talking with them and trying to assist them and get this work going for the last six or nine months. I think their proposals have some merit, and if we pass today's hurdle and we start work on the more detailed plans for improvements to Dirty House playing fields, we will certainly look to see what we can do to aid the useful, sustainable retention of some of the farm buildings. Then, of course, there's the issue of the DMQ space. And I think it's very important that I spend a minute or two trying to explain why this site is included as part of the plans. We've been asked to regenerate an entire area, and this includes Cribblewood Lane. At the moment, on Cribblewood Lane, you have shops on one side of the street and a serving void on the other, where you look upon the side of the in the two warehouse. The consented plans here, and we're not changing them as a result of the Section 73 application, will bring new homes, 
the shops and community space at the ground level. Our intention here is to complete the street, and we've always intended to include a new community centre, except now it will open out onto a new public space that is being built without a lot of money that it would, and I should say, passing the bad money if we were instrumental in helping to secure. So it's not that we're not involved in this. Now let's talk about the Great Terrace Triangles. This issue has also come up. It is very important land for the development. And the point I would make here is that we are replacing the space with first class quality green space very nearby, including the new <coughs> park and the improvements to the Dirty House and fields, which are within 100 metres or so of the houses. And it really is the case that we're providing a lot more green space throughout the currency of this development, some 22 acres more than exists now. And finally, life record. The development partners are huge fans of public transport investments. That is beyond doubt. We've worked very hard to produce a scheme that will deliver in the first phases 250 million pounds worth of road, pedestrian and cycle improvements a 12 million pound investment in the bus network, and we will be working to produce uh, the new bus station as part of the new Red Cross shopping centre. And of course, the railway station is very much on cost. Live rail is a nice idea, but it is just a concept. There has been no demand study, no route plan, it is unfunded, and it is unsupported by Transport for London. Were this to change, we would be delighted. It would bring extra transport capacity to the area. <coughs> Absolutely delighted. But that's as far as it goes. Councils, this scheme works, and it works now. If we get the green light tonight, the coming years will bring untold benefits to farmers and to the people who live here. <laughs> I'm very happy to ask questions on any aspect of the scheme. Thank you very much. Councillor Cunning. I've got a number of questions for you, but it's a private. Uh, the, the first question is to ask you why you describe quick with green outside the UK as a slope in Bory. Can you look at the photograph next to you? Oh, yes, I is, is that a fair description of slope in Bory? Yes, it is. That's not right. Now, can you just clarify? <laughs> So I, I, I'm getting confused. The proposal tonight is to bring development of that space forward. Is that correct? Um, we have planning permission to develop the space, and it may be brought forward earlier than we had previously thought. Yeah, yeah. So that's not my question. My question is: Does your application tonight bring development on that land into phase one? No. There's no change. That's an increase in information. So, so what phase do what phase you intend to do development on this piece of land? Councillor Cohen, we will be producing the matter applications on a number of pieces of land in the course of the next six months. Well, uh, well, well, so so tonight we're not considering it as phase one. Okay, right, we'll, we'll check that with the Second question. It is my understanding that the original outline building for the BQD was for a health centre. Have I got that wrong? Only in part. Uh, only in part. What part have I got wrong? It was more than a health centre. Okay, but you can take the residences as well. You don't get the residence plus a health centre. Yeah? Yes. Is it your proposal to continue um, with that scheme, with the health centre attached? Preserve natural applications, including for the site, will be coming forward over the next few months. We can say that's an evasive answer. Is it, is it your intention, when you bring forward reserve matters, to, to still go for a health centre and pass that building? Um, we intend to provide a community centre with suitable ancillary uses uh, at some point in this area. <laughs> I take, that, I, take that, I take that as a no. 
I, I attended a, a meeting of crypto forum and you, 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 you were present. Um, and did I get this wrong? At, at that meeting, I can't remember what it was, that's a year ago, I think, um, you indicated that the new proposal for the building of that piece of land was for the, a new growth treatment centre. Did I get that wrong? You did not get that wrong. I indicated that it was one of the ideas we were thinking about. I did not say it was one. So, two proposals that, that the community um, were, 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 were that the community are now becoming less um, possible as far as you're concerned. Yeah? What can you tell us tonight? You must have some idea. What the use of the proposal from that side will be? We are busy talking about this with adult social services and with the planners and with consulting with the residents. I am unable to elaborate any further on the clear answer I've already given to you. Okay, can, can, can we now move on further north um, to the proposed bridge? People are cool. Living yeah. Um, it, it's not going to be covered, is it? No. Yeah. Um, because of the, 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 the artist impression I saw looked like the South of France in the skies. Um, it, it anticipated that this is possibly going to cross a, 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 the North Circular um, in climate where the high winds range, that it's not going to be a very attractive for people to. Um, the cycle. Um, Councilman, I don't think that it's any different to any other approach road to the downtrodden. Mm -hmm. May I ask, sorry, <laughs> I've, been part, I've been part of notes of my colleagues said by the end of the in this age. Apparently, building on the DMQ land is in phase one. I should have clarified that. <laughs> Well, well, can I go back? Because when, when you said it wasn't, I couldn't just ask my, my next question, but I'll go back to that. Why, why is it being brought forward to pay for I don't understand. What, what's the reason for that? Uh, one of the reasons is that we do have to, we do, we do have to consider quite early the potential relocation of the white of the state, and it is one of the possible locations for it. Okay. Back, to the, back, back, back to the bridge. Um, you, you see, you presented this to us tonight uh, as the, the key driver for this application tonight. So it, it, it seems to me the, the, the key um, idea that you're putting forward that this will be a wonderful asset. Um, and, and yes, it's not going to be covered, so it's going to be all the elements. And, and I suggest, given the kind of experience at the moment, it's not going to be attractive to you to do it. Um, it's my view that the bridge is going to be no different to any other approach road uh, from the station, from the bus station, from the surrounding area. Uh, well, I hope you're wrong because most approach roads don't cross and nobody walks at all. But anyway, that's the problem. We'll go back up in transport, but we'll go to walk or something. Now, my final set of questions relates to the new rail station. Is the proposal to build a new railway station between Henry Station in the north and Brooklyn Station in the south. Yes. Uh, and where's that located? Uh, shown on the illustrative uh, plans up towards the north of the Sierra Land. Can, um, can you categorically assure us tonight that if network rail come back to you and say it's our applicable station? or the new station, that you will abandon plans for the new station? 
I'm not in the completely high set question. I've been working in this network rail for the past 10 years, and the issue of closure of critical station has never, ever been seriously raised. I have been leading on that negotiation, all the rail utilization studies, all of the timetable, work on the basis that the original existing critical station is retained. But of course it's, it's not built to take the 12 o'clock train. It is not built to take the 12 o'clock train and it cannot be extended to take the 12 o'clock train, which is one of the reasons why a new station will be necessary for the area. So, so, so do you understand that then that the fear is even if Quickwood is kept open? Many trains will just fly past the not stop. The understanding that we've obtained with detailed work, the benefit of detailed work, etc., is that the existing stopping pattern, which is of the shorter, slower trains, will be maintained. No. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, thank you very much. Mr. Joseph, I'm the um, you said that you said that you'd be involved in this for 15 years. Correct. Okay. Um, you've heard the speakers tonight be tremendous concern about the green which we've just been discussing. And there's also concern still about the triangles and red terms. The very divided we have this thing, section 73 in front of the CMT with new bridges, substantial alterations to the improved plan. You've met the residents, you said, in lots of meetings, I believe you have now, some few of meetings. And were you aware, between the permission of this new, new section 73 application, of the strength of feeling, public feeling, as we heard tonight, about particularly Pickleworth's case, but also from Red Terrace, because after all, they've got a big development on top of them, but then, of course, the triangle is always it's lost. I know you said you would provide some, but that's long term. So, I mean, with the opportunity of the Section 73 application, did you, did you, say, did you ever consider actually maybe not proceeding particularly with the BEQ space? The strength of public feeling on the BEQ space is relatively new. <laughs> The strength of feeling on the triangles, I have been aware of for a long time. <laughs> I, I really was getting out in the scheme. The size of this was a vast scheme. I just wondered, it wasn't, you know, with the section, with the section 73 application, gave you a chance to reconsider. But that happens my question to you. Councillor Kenny considered all of these aspects with great care and we decided not to change that aspect in the Section 73 application. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Just to uh, sorry, briefly, I do want to suspend what you said, but I want to take that a bit further. So if there was uh, a proper demand study, if there was a proper business plan, and if TFL agreed, no, I agree TFL needs to be part of this, and that may not be, we're happy when we start building 2016 or whatever. Would that still be a possibility, or, or would some of the early phase work, phase one work, preclude the possibility of a light railway? Or would, would it block off potential routes? I know it's a hypothetical question, but you're asking the same question as has been raised in some detail by Councillor Jeff Cook outside of here. And I can only answer you as I once again, which is that one of the routes shown um, would have to have a slightly longer excavation in order to transition from the eastern side of the of the A forty one into the new development. So that would lengthen the bridge uh, another pass by fifteen meters, which is not significant. So the answer to the question is no, it does not preclude but the, anything coming from it. But the TFL is <coughs> not like a convention event, yeah? Correct. It is a major strategic piece of work and it's not for us. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Councillor Selby. Thanks, Joseph. Councillor Cohen on referred to when the when shopping centre first opened as the, uh, the North West West End, and that was great at the time. I don't think that should anymore. I think the North West West End has now gone to Westfield. Do you think this planning application will bring the, uh, the West End back to Glen Cross? Without that. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Thank you very much, Mr. Joseph. Thank you. Could you just turn the microphone off for me, please? Thank you very much.